Hey guys, this is Omniscience, and I'm going to be showing you guys how to use the cloth held tools within Cinema 4D. So, we're going to be sort of creating something a little bit like this thing that I created, and I'll give you guys a quick render just to give you an idea of what I was going for. So, I'm going to pause the video, I'll be back once. Okay, so it's rendered, and this is sort of, I guess, the look. I was going for what this was going to be um when I was working on it was sort of like the earth was being like pulled up and there this was this area in here is going to be like cities or something and the earth was being torn off you know and the cities were taking over or whatever and it was going to be some sort of a naturalistic political artistic statement sort of thing and then I got lazy but anyways the concept basically is going to be with this cloth and making cloth and stuff fall down over things. So, without further ado, let's get started. Um, no, I don't want to save this, because I didn't do anything. So, to start, we're going to make a sphere, and we're going to make a plane. And before I really get started, I should mention that this is not really a tutorial for someone who's brand new to Cinema 4D, but, I mean, if you have a few hours experience in the program, you will be able to follow me, because this actually isn't that complicated of a tutorial to follow at least. So let's uh let's go ahead and get started. We have our sphere in our plane and apparently I'm gonna hit the edit menu. So we're gonna make both of these editable by pressing C on the keyboard. And to the sphere we're gonna go tags, cloth hilled cloth hilled? I don't know. Cloth hilled tags and we're gonna hit a collider. And then on the plane we're gonna go tags, cloth hilled tags cloth. So, right here on the cloth held collider tag on the sphere, um, just make sure it's use collider. I'm going to leave everything at defaults right now. Um, now let's go to the cloth tag on the plane, and we're going to be using the cache mode, and what the cache mode basically does is calculates everything that's happening, and then caches it so that you don't have to, like, calculate every single thing that's going to be going on with this cloth when you hit play to watch your animation. It's just going to make my life a little easier. But I'm going to go into expert, because I'm an expert, not really, and I'm going to hit self-collision, and what that's going to do is make it so that the cloth doesn't intersect with itself, and it's just going to make it look a lot nicer and more realistic, and it's actually not going to destroy my render times too badly. So let's go in and just hit calculate cache, and this little test thing is going to come up. And this could either take you longer or shorter than me. Most likely it'll be shorter because my computer is a piece of garbage. But as you can see, that wasn't horrible at all. I mean, that was real time. I didn't speed up the video at all. That was like two seconds. So this isn't too bad on render times. And voila, we have our nice little cloth looking animation. Now, if you don't like this, uh, you can go into the tag. Let's, I can bring down the stiffness. You can play with things. Uh, we can now we're every time we change something though, if we want to see it, we have to calculate the cache again. So let's calculate the cache and see how things have changed. Waiting, waiting, do do do. I'm gonna say random stuff and make myself look like a fool. So now it's just a little bit less stiff. It falls better. You know, play with it, get it to how you like it. So that's really the basic technique, and you can stop watching right now if you want. I'd appreciate it if you didn't. But anyways, um, oh shit, what did I just do? Undo that. So um, let's say we wanted to, I'll, t I'll show you guys how to texture the cloth. That's what I'll do. And um, I can't really take too much credit for this texturing thing I'm going to show you, because I basically just looked over at this tutorial on Cinema 4D, Tattered Cloth in Cinema 4D, day one. And it's on cg.tutsplus. Uh, I guess I'm going to do a little plug for them for no reason. But that's a, this is a, that was a really great tutorial that kind of inspired me to do this tutorial. And if you guys are looking for some advanced cloth stuff, I would look at this. This is a great tutorial. I'll link it in the description. But back to my tutorial. So let's just do a test render to see what things look like. And... Right away, it looks like crap. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring out a hypernerbs, and I'm going to drop the plane into the hypernerbs. And this will sort of help to smooth out, 
you know, that looks a hundred times better. That's going to help to smooth out any random garbage that we have going on with the uh, with the cloth. And it's just going to make things look smoother and really more cloth-like because cloth doesn't really make sharp angles. So let's make a new material. Go into the material. Um, color, whatever you want. I don't care. I am probably going to make mine poop brown. Yep, that looks nice. And we're going to go into the diffusion, and we're going to add a noise map, if I can find the noise map. Apparently my eyes don't work. Uh, change the mix strength down to like 35% or so, and then we're going to click on that little noise, in case you didn't see what I did there, I just clicked on that. And we're going to click this little arrow right here, and we're going to change it to this texture, which is called FBM. And we're going to bring the global scale up to 300. So that'll, again, it'll make it look a little bit more like a cloth. So we're also going to add a bump channel. Click on that. Um, texture. Load image. And I just found this nice little texture on the internet. Fabric Texture Chew Chair by Errant Somebody. And I'm going to load that. Uh, I don't want to create a copy of the document location. I'll, um, this is a re I'll just link you guys to this. It's, I just found it on the internet. And we're going to bring the strength down to something like 5%. So that'll look better. And then on the specular, we're going to make the height something like 7. But we're going to increase the width to like 90. So let's apply our material to the hypernerbs. And let's see how we look. And that, in my opinion, is a fairly decent looking cloth texture. Um, I'm sure there's ways to do this better. Uh, I know there's ways to do this better. I might actually bump up the bump channel. Ha, huh, I made a pun. Bump up the bump channel. I'm going to bring this up to like 13. That'll give us a little bit more depth to things. Yeah, sure, why not? So as you can see, we've got a couple problems here. So I, I guess my best advice for fixing this is just drag around the sphere, find a new angle. <laughs> That's about all I can really say, because for whatever reason it's doing that, I honestly have no clue. So I'm actually just going to cut that whole thing out. So it's, you know, that's, that's about it. Um, that is our cloth. Um, we can texture our sphere with whatever you like. I don't know. You do, you think. Maybe this, maybe things are upside down, and this is actually a coffee filter that I've rested a sphere into for no reason. Um, <laughs> I'm just playing around. I think I'm going to call the tutorial just about done. So, um, while I play... We'll update here. Um, I'm shit. Little update here while I play. Uh, I'm going to be, you know, doing more and more tutorials. I'm also doing a thing with one of my buddies' YouTube page where I'm going to be um, hosting some of his stuff, and he's going to do vice versa for mine, and he makes some cool Halo videos and stuff, so hopefully that'll be fun. So please, you know, like and subscribe. You know, I have like 10 subscribers, it kind of sucks. So I don't mean to be an e-whore, but please subscribe if you like my stuff. So uh, that's about it. Peace out, guys.